Welcome to The Hypnotist. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. This features powerful hypnosis, so do not listen while driving or operating machinery. This recording is not suitable for those with epilepsy or severe mental health issues. And as you breathe in, just imagine that you're breathing in a feeling of calm and relaxation. Breathing in that relaxation, and as you breathe out, just imagine that you're breathing out any feelings of tension, stress, or anxiety. And I'd like you to use the power of your imagination to imagine that you're perhaps in a group therapy class, maybe in an old church or a community center. Just imagine feeling that you're sitting on one of those wooden or plastic chairs, surrounded maybe by a few people in that room. And I want you to imagine that there is a, a lady at the front of that therapy class asking you to just breathe in and breathe out. And as you breathe in and breathe out, you close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, you can't help but feel deeper and deeper relaxed. And in this class, it almost feels like you're in a club, perhaps even a hypnosis club. But the first rule of hypnosis club is you do not talk to anyone about hypnosis club. The lady at the front of the class ask you to imagine any pain. Imagine any pain that you have and then project it outside of your body and imagine it turning into a ball of healing white light. Imagine that that healing white light takes away that pain and imagine that ball of healing white light starts going over you, moving over your body healing you and while that's happening just focus on your breathing in and breathing out going deeper and deeper relaxed with each and every breath and as you keep on breathing in and breathing out I want you to imagine that you're stepping forward through the back door of the room and you don't know where this door is going to take you and I wonder where it does lead. Perhaps to your cave. And I want you to imagine walking into your cave. And I don't know if this cave will be a snowy, icy cave, or perhaps a dark, rocky cave. But imagine that you're in your cave. That's right, going deeper into your cave. And maybe there's a light at the end of your cave and you're just following the cave down towards that light. Appreciate the quietness in your cave. The calmness. Imagine that as you breathe in and breathe out you're able to release any and all tension now. Going deeper and deeper. I want you to imagine there is a, a chair, a comfortable chair in your cave maybe a reclining chair and imagine sitting on that chair feeling so relaxed breathing in that feeling of relaxation and releasing any tension you can relax the muscles in and around your eyes now any muscles that are feeling tense around your forehead or around your jaw just release that tension now as you breathe in, imagine that feeling of calm and relaxation, even relaxing your internal organs, your heart, your lungs, your gut, 
feeling deeper and deeper relaxed. And I want you to entertain an idea while you're relaxing on that chair. The idea is that you're not your job. You're not how much money you have in the bank. You're not the car you drive and you're not the contents of your wallet. I want you to focus on you, what it means to be you. Breathe in that relaxation and release any tension. As you start disconnecting who you are at your core from the possessions that you own. Because if you're not careful, the things you own end up owning you. Connect with your true identity. What really makes you, you, not the possessions that you own. And as you feel deeper and deeper relaxed, I want you to notice that you're sharing this cave with an animal a friendly animal, your power animal. What is that animal? How does it move? Really focus on looking at that animal. Consider why it's that animal compared to any other animal. What can you learn from that animal? And as you study that animal and how it moves, connect with the power that exists within that animal. And consider, consider that your life is your life and it's ending one minute at a time. On a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. And you already know that someday, you're going to die. And that appreciation of the finality of life gives you a sense of urgency to tap into your own internal power. And I want you to imagine that whatever power exists within that animal starts transferring to you. That you get a feeling of resourcefulness. That however long you have, you're going to connect with a resourceful feeling of power that you can do whatever is necessary for you to pursue the ideal life for you. Imagine that feeling of power, that resourceful feeling, transferring from the animal into your heart and get a real sense of glowing resourcefulness. I want you to appreciate that sometimes, sometimes in life you lose things. But sometimes it's only when you've lost everything that you're free to do anything. And I want you to lose any feelings of limitations, any baggage that you've been carrying perhaps for years, all those things that have been holding you back. I want you to lose those things, lose those limitations and tap into that resourceful feeling of power I want you to imagine you're still there on that comfortable chair in that cave. And I want you to imagine that you're falling asleep while also appreciating that you're never really asleep and you're never really awake. And yet you fall asleep in that chair anyway now. And while you're asleep, you have an interesting dream. And in that dream, you're on a plane Perhaps you're just observing the other people on the plane. And you've been on a plane perhaps many times. You've got so used to the different portions of soap, food. Everything is single service. And I want you to notice that as you look to your left, there is an interesting character sat immediately next to you. I want this person to represent a charismatic, confident character. I want you to introduce yourself to that person. Feel an immediate connection, a surprising connection of just their confidence, their charisma. 
And in fact, this person sitting next to you in this plane will represent all the ways that you wish you were in that person. I want you to imagine that all the things that lack in you, that you would admire in other people, exist in this person. Things that perhaps you're afraid to do, the person next to you does not have that fear. Someone that oozes confidence, charisma. Someone that just gets things done. That doesn't worry about the opinions of other people. This is a person that represents all those things that you aspire to be. The kind of person that would be able to live the kind of life that you would like if only you were a bit more like them. They are the version of you with no worries, no constraints, just the ability to pursue the life that they want on their terms. And I want you to imagine that you are able to step inside their body, to feel how they feel, to breathe how they breathe, to get an overall feeling of what it would be like to have their way of thinking. That's right, just connect into that and it almost feels like from this point onwards you're living through them I want you to imagine how you would move how you would walk how you would talk what your priorities would be how you would focus on whatever it is that you want to do really connect with that incredible feeling imagine that suddenly what other people think matters less and suddenly it's all about your own mission, what it is that you want to do. I want you to connect with that feeling of resourcefulness, that feeling of just playing by your own rules. Allow that to integrate with just how you think. And now that you're in that version of you, I want you to imagine that you're going to do something that would be a strange thing to do on a plane. But given that you're only playing by your own rules, I want you to imagine that you grab hold of the oxygen mask above you. Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to notice. And just imagine that you're taking deep breaths of that oxygen mask. And as you take those deep breaths, just imagine that you're going deeper and deeper relaxed. So relaxed, in fact, that you start feeling slightly euphoric, docile, so relaxed. So relaxed that you're going to have a very strange dream. A dream within a dream. And in this dream, I want you to imagine that you're at a basement, a large basement, not of a house, but of a, a commercial premise, perhaps like a bar or a restaurant. There are concrete stairs that go down. It's spacious and there are concrete pillars, industrial style lighting. There are other people down there in that basement. And I want you to imagine that in this basement is some type of club. But it's a club that you're not allowed to talk about. I want you to imagine that in this club because it's your first time there, you have to do something. And that thing that you have to do is fight. I want you to imagine there is someone in that group, a beautiful person, someone that you will be fighting. And you start wondering, how much can you really know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? Most people, normal people, do just about anything to avoid a fight, but here you are choosing to fight. But this beautiful person that you're about to fight is not a human. It is simply a representation within your imagination. Someone that represents your fears, your limitations, your weakness, Everything that's holding you back from living the kind of life that you deserve. The very best life possible for you. 
Now this opponent, remember, is not a real person. This has now taken on a physical representation of everything that is holding you back in your life. I want you to look at them and know how it feels to fight whatever is holding you back. I want you to imagine that you're clenching your fists. You're wearing whatever is appropriate to fight your limitations. And then I want you to embark on that fight. And you do whatever feels right in that fight. Maybe there are people around you cheering you on. Maybe you're punching, kicking. Whatever you're doing, just know that you're going to win this fight. Because the part of you that is absolutely committed to living the best possible life for you is no longer willing to be held back from fears and limitations, emotional baggage that you've been carrying around for years. This is going to be a fight that you win. And it may be brutal, but I want you to imagine fighting and winning. And you might be punching the representation of all your limitations, maybe in the face or the body, kicking them. Maybe they're bruised or bleeding. But just know that this is you taking control of your life. That's right. And I want you to see that when you've won the fight, the part that was so powerful before suddenly looks weak. What was beautiful now looks pathetic and somehow unable to influence your life to the level that it has been influencing it. And you just get a sense that you felt like destroying destroying something that's been holding you back. Now that you've won the fight, I want you to get a feeling, a feeling of being more resilient, stronger, able to face the harsh realities of the world in a more resourceful way. I want you to get a sense of an idea that whereas before you were kind of soft like cookie dough, And yet now, now you feel strong, almost like you've been carved out of wood. I want you to locate where you feel that strength within you. This is not physical strength. This is emotional strength. This is the strength that will enable you to deal with adversity, setbacks, betrayal. This is the inner character strength that is now strong carved out of wood and as you connect with that strong feeling you get an idea that the future will be better for you and I want you to imagine now that you're about to go home sleeping in your bed but something's changed you will enjoy the best sleep of your life babies don't sleep this well You're going to have one final dream while you're fast asleep, sleeping like a baby. A strange dream. Some may call it a nightmare. But you will perceive it to be perhaps the best dream that you could ever have. And I want you to imagine that you're working in a convenience store, perhaps in some kind of dodgy neighborhood. I want you to imagine that you're living a mundane life, a boring job. It doesn't challenge you, it doesn't stimulate you. It's just you existing. There you are in a convenience store, just doing enough to get by. Maybe you're looking at the the till, the checkout, looking at food or things around in the store. But I want you to hear a bell as someone walks into the store. You see someone. Someone swaggering into this store. Wearing a leather jacket. Really walking with a sense of purpose. And it seems like 
their purpose is you. They walk up to you and they show you a gun. They point that gun at you and tell you to leave out the back of this convenience store. You can feel your heart racing. You can feel that this is not a good situation. And yet you do. Through duress, you go to the back outside and you do go outside. You go outside and the person holding the gun asks you to get down on your knees. You can hear him cocking the gun. You can feel, you can feel the gun towards the back of your head. The person holding the gun asks you, asks you your, your name and asks for your identification, perhaps a driving license. And I want you to imagine you're giving him your driving license. He says your name and you agree. And then he asks you what it was that you wanted to be. You're confused by the question. He then hits the gun on the top of your head. You can feel, feel the pain running down your spine, a sharp pain on the top of your head. As he asks you again, what do you want to be? And I want you to say whatever comes to mind inside your own mind's ear as to what it is that you want to be or do more than anything else. And as you imagine that, the person behind you holding the gun asks you why. Why it is that you want to do that. And I want you to listen as whatever it is starts coming to mind. What is your reason? Your dream, your ambition? The person with the gun keeps hold of the identification. But then they give you an ultimatum, a challenge, a warning. They tell you that they will check in on you in six weeks time. And if you are not pursuing that dream, that ambition, that life purpose, then they will kill you. I want you to get a sense of the clarity that when it's a choice between living your dream, living your purpose, or not existing at all, suddenly it's the easiest choice in the world. Suddenly you don't have to worry about rejection, failure, setbacks. Just pursuing what is most important. I want you to imagine that you get up off your knees and you're walking towards that future. What would that be like? What would you do the very next morning, the very next day, to make immediate progress on whatever is most important to you? What would it be like to make progress every single day? And I want you to think, perhaps five or ten years from now, when you're living that dream, fulfilling that purpose, I want you to imagine that that time where your very life was threatened could be the very best thing that's ever happened to you. I want you to imagine that tomorrow will be the most beautiful day of your life. That your breakfast will taste better than any meal you have ever tasted. Because you get a sense now of what it will be like to have complete clarity. That whereas before it was a should or a like, now it is a must. 
I want you to imagine what it would be like to live with just no fear, no distractions, and having the ability to let that which does not matter truly slide. And I want you to know that you have all the resources deep within you, not pretending to be someone else, but you, as you, have all the resources necessary to pursue that dream, that goal, that purpose. It doesn't mean that it will be easy, but it does mean that you have the ability to learn from setbacks. You've got that strength of character to keep making progress even when things get tough. That you can learn from mistakes and setbacks, but you will keep making progress, keep making steps towards whatever that whatever that ideal life is for you. And it will be a life not from consumerism and products, but it will be a life of impact, purpose, and meaning. And the real meaning of your life is whatever meaning you give it. Only you and you alone can decide that. And now I want you to imagine that all of this was just a dream within a dream within a dream. Not only are you not there, sleeping in your own bed, but equally, you're not in a basement, or in fact, an airplane, or indeed back there in the cave, on that comfortable reclining chair. And indeed, not quite, there in a group therapy room. I want you to imagine that you're back wherever you are now. And I want you, as you listen to my voice, to get an overall sense that you will connect with what is most resourceful within you to pursue whatever is most important for you. You will be your authentic self not pretending to be someone else that you're not. And also, I want all parts to work in collaboration, not in conflict, towards whatever is most important for you. In a few moments' time, I will count from 1 to 10 to awaken you. You will awaken with a feeling of optimism for the future, a feeling of purpose and resourcefulness, and a feeling that you can do Whatever will take you, slowly but surely, in the direction of your very best life. All parts will awaken in the present, and all normal sensations will return to your arms and legs. And you will have an inner drive to pursue whatever matters most. Starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.